Good evening, everyone. Praise the Lord. Let's uh, turn our Bibles to Habakkuk as we are doing this um, series of uh, true vision of revival. Since um, God is true and God's word is true, and we have the series uh, with the true vision of revival as true truth partners we have done from first john um, it's um, good to have a a theme for our series so we can remember we we'll read uh, from verse 1 chapter 1 verse 1 to up to 11 we'll read um, alternatively habakkuk chapter 1 verse 1 onwards <clears throat> The burden which uh, Habakkuk the prophet did see, O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Verse 3, Why dost thou show me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and um, they are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore, the law is slacked, and judgment that never go forth. For the wicked that compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Verse 5. Behold, ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe though it be told you. But lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, the bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. 7. They are terrible and dreadful. The judgment and their and dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards, and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves, and their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. It's 9. They shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind. And they shall gather the captivity as the sand. And they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be a scorn unto them. They shall deride every stronghold, but they shall heap dust and take it. Verse 11. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing that imputing this his power unto his God. Let's stop here. Let's pray. As the Lord to speak to us, in front of us. Dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you through your Son, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask you at this time, help me, give me the utterance and you speak to all of us, Lord. Lord, as we are studying from this um, portion of the scripture, Lord, help us, Lord, to apply your truths into our lives that we may be encouraged and be blessed lord bless me also be with me in jesus name we pray amen the word uh, habakkuk means uh, a wrestler or an embracer as uh, habakkuk prophet the prophet it says he is given this title of a, a prophet as he is um, his um, profession was being a prophet and probably his life was uh, being as a prophet of God. So he, he was titled as prophet and he was uh, called as an, a wrestler. He was wrestling with God and uh, he had this great burden as God reveals his message to Habakkuk for his people that there is this great burden uh, coming out of uh, the message of God in, uh, to him that he had this great burden 
because he had all these very tough questions that he also had the burden uh, and he had these tough questions to God. Sometimes we also in our lives when we go through things that are very difficult for us to, uh, to receive it, the truths and how God, how God deals with things in our lives and in the lives of our dear ones and of our family, families. How do we respond? Habakkuk also was a great man of faith. He was very faithful and he knew who God is. He knew that God is holy. He knew that God is righteous, that uh, God's eyes are so pure to behold iniquity, that, that he cannot behold iniquity without setting things right. He also knew that God is powerful and able. Nothing is impossible with God. He is a just man. He lived by faith. And also he was having this very close relationship with God as a father um, and a son relationship that he was um, wrestling with God. As he re receives this truth, from God that he had these very tough questions to God. With great burden, he pours out his heart as the psalmist in Psalm 62 verse 8 says, Trust in the Lord at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. God is a refuge for us, Selah. So here David is saying, pour out your heart to God at all times. Trust God. This prophet also was um, pouring out his heart and wrestling with, with God as on behalf of his people. He was crying out to God and he's saying that how long shall I cry to, to God. So I titled uh, for this evening message in a title called Embracing God. As God's children, how he embraced the truth no matter what, though the fig tree shall not blossom, verse 317, I am just giving a, just a summary also. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail in the field, shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the, in the stalls when the destruction comes upon the people, and there it's all desolate and uh, gloom and doom. He is... Uh, child of God who is embracing um, the judgment of God and uh, the consequences with, um, with faith and he's saying I am going to embrace the way of God and he's saying that I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation, verse 18, that's also our memory verse sometime back, so I will yet rejoice in spite of all that I see before me to be very gloomy and very depressing and very distressing and as he is wrestling for answers, as he had this great burden deep from his heart pouring out that he um, yet exercises great faith and embraces God and God's work and God's ways, trusting in God as an all-knowing Heavenly Father with a true vision that he had a true vision of revival, a true vision of uh, vision and a prayer, uh, a true prayer of uh, asking God for mercy in the midst of wrath, seeking mercy in the midst of the judgment of God. Habakkuk was a prophet, as you see, who lived in times when there was no peace in the land. Judgment had uh, fallen back and there is no regard for true Justice. Probably he lived in times, uh, he must have seen the times of Josiah or prophet where there was great revival and as he was uh, seeing things and very mindful of spiritual things, being a prophet of God, he cares about um, things that God cares. And as he sees iniquity and wickedness growing before his eyes, probably every day people are always 
in uh, strife and and contention he's he's saying in verse 2 and um, even uh, cry out unto thee of violence and thou will not save when you show me iniquity verse 3 says cause me behold grievance for spoiling and violence are are before me they they rise up to to fight and to strife and to, to contend and they don't regard uh, any law here he is saying that God is showing me all of this, Lord, and he is saying that how long should I cry unto thee? And uh, how long you have not um, willing to hear my cry, or how long shall I cry? And he accuses God, saying that God, you are failing to hear and save the land that is filled with um, iniquity, filled with um, wickedness where the wicked people have an upper hand as he says that um, the wicked deaths surround compass about the righteous the times that he is living in are very dark times as i portrayed there <coughs> with with a dark uh, background probably you can imagine how when there is no light or when the light is so dim in the times that he is living in the prophet lived in a period of uh, spiritual decline his and um, where justice is turned into a lie and when the, the wicked surrounded uh, the righteous and uh, wrong judgment were prevailed proceeded or the true justice was not served and nobody was seeking truth in the land and they have broken and and have busted uh, the covenant relationship we can turn actually to turn to the times to jeremiah chapter 5 we can see how jeremiah describes about the times that um, they were living during the times where the children of judah did not care much about um, truth or about God, Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 1 says, Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, know and seek in the broad places, wherefore if you can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon. God is saying that, uh, show me one righteous person, and I am going to pardon this land. God is saying that they have refused to receive correction, verse 3. Everyone swears falsely, verse 2. He, Jeremiah describes the condition of the land, the people that are living in the land of, of times where Habakkuk and Jeremiah lived, that they were, have gone totally corrupt. They have ref, refused to receive correction. They have refused to return back to repentance. God is saying that if um, they have not known the way of Lord, not the judgment of their God, I would have uh, spoken unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God, but these people have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Jeremiah uses very graphic language as we continue to read. It's very graphic. He goes on to see that their in their transgressions are many, verse 6, and their backslidings are increased. How shall I pardon thee them the for this the children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods and uh, he goes on very graphically committing adultery and uh, assembling themselves by troops in uh, harlot houses and all of these very very treacherous dealings verse 11 concludes saying that the house of israel and the house of judah have dwelt treacherously against me like treason they have broken the covenant of God, the covenant relationship of God to follow God and um, to maintain truth and to give place to God. There is no fear of God. They have forsaken God. There is no justice. They have bent on um, doing wickedness and uh, they have increased their transgressions and their transgressions before God is continue to grow. God is saying that how can I pardon? Uh, uh, how can I pardon 
and God is Jeremiah is challenging them is show me one person who is is upright. As Habakkuk is seeing before him all of these things and crying out to God, knowing that God is a God who can revive, who can who is able to make things right, who has given the law, but the law is not honored. And when things don't match up to how God wants it to be as being God's children, but there is completely um, a state of being which is completely doesn't match with uh, the nature of God and the character of God in the land. Is it similar to look at our times that we live in when we when we see in news and uh, other things that happen? There is this um, burden that comes to us as we watch certain uh, wicked um, things that happen and it comes up in the news or when things happen in our lives. There is this great wrestling that happens in our lives that why is God, sometimes we ask God why are you silent? There is this distress in him, in, in Jeremiah, crying out to God for making things right. Habakkuk accused God of failing to hear and save. You can see he is not just taking it, um, crying out, but also here you, you see that you are not doing anything, Lord. I am crying out, but it is of no use. When the land is filled with violence and wickedness, th there is this uh, personality of this prophet where he goes to the next level before God, before his wrestle before God, saying that, um, how long shall I cry unto, unto God, O oh Lord, when I see all of this evil before me, and uh, accusing God that he has no plans or he is not dealing with it, when an evil is not dwelt with. God gives this, um, God gives this response in chapter, verse 5 onwards. You can see how God responded back to Habakkuk. The Lord says that um, God is going to do an astounding work. Verse 5 to verse 11. You can see the description of how God is going to raise up the Babylonians to judge. His people, and that will be an utter astonishment. It will be utterly astounding during this um, times when God is going to raise up an empire which will be so swift and, and violent. And God is saying that I am going to work a work in your days which you would not believe. When Habakkuk cries, how long? Would you be silent? God answers Habakkuk. says, Behold ye among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe, though it be told you. But lo, I am going to raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They will be terrible and fierce. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. So they have their own rule, they have their own law and uh, they are terrible and uh, dreadful. They commit offense to such an extent and they have their law and they are very sift or and they heap dust or they build up uh, buildings and ramparts of earth to scale and to, up to the walls of the enemy cities and um, make them rubble. They shall scoff at uh, the kings or the leaders, verse 10, and princes shall be scorn unto them and they shall deride every stronghold or they are going to mock, ridicule and they are going to make them a heap of dust and they will regard everything 
ascribing everything to all the destruction and the violence that they have done and the total devastation of the land uh, so quickly just like uh, how um, compared their horses will be swifter than leopards and uh, more fierce than um, evening wolves ravaging God's people and destroying, making an utter destruction of, of the children of God. When Habakkuk hears the way of God, what God is going to do with God's people, he had a bigger um, burden. And he goes on from verse 12, again he cries out to God. He cries out to them, why, why is it this way, Lord? Second question that he had, or you can say the second problem. The first problem is why? Why are a silent Lord? The first burden that he had was why are the silent Lord, and the second one was uh, saying that why are you doing it this way, Lord? I am expecting something else from you. It is just like this saying that your cure is worse than the disease. Some people attribute even um, this saying for even COVID. Say the vaccine cure is worse than. Um, uh, actually having COVID-19 uh, COVID during the time of the pandemic is like in order to remove the disease, the cure would be even more uh, worse. So Habakkuk had now another problem. Why Chaldeans, those wicked, um, corrupt people, more wicked than um, the wickedness that I see in the people of my land, why Chaldeans? So he had this wrestling that's going on. Why, why are you doing it this way, Lord? So Habakkuk was weeping and wrestling and asking God, uh, why, Lord, this way? Sometimes even in our lives, we have these questions. Why are you taking so long when we are going through sometimes difficult times in, in our lives? When we are going through tri uh, tribulations or when you are going through afflictions and sufferings and uh, when we are before um, something that uh, we cannot um, continue to be in that situation. When we are before people that, are, that we are surrounded by evil and uh, sin. Not only among uh, those that we are surrounded by, sometime, sometimes it, co it could also be within our lives, B within our life itself. When we go through difficult times, when we ask God, Lord, how, can, how long can I be in this state of um, weakness? It could be a, a spiritual weakness. It could be... A physical weakness, it could be some kind of an affliction, it could be some kind of a disease, it could be a, some kind of a problem, it could be some kind of a, a burden, it could be some kind that you are seeking God for help but God is not giving you deliverance so quickly and you are crying out and you are saying that how long Lord, how long should I continue to cry unto you, how long, why are you silent, are you not seeing my cause, are you not looking at my pain, my suffering, and uh, uh, are you not hearing my prayer as I wrestle with you? Are you not seeing when people are against me and uh, accusing me falsely? Are you not um, taking any action against this, knowing that you are a tr true God, you are a just God, you are the righteous God, and you know um, that I am innocent, yet they accuse me, or yet um, there is evil before me, and how long would you be silent knowing that you are a righteous God and you can bring revival, you can change the hearts of people and you can nothing is impossible to you, you being like Habakkuk, being just, trusting God, righteous within yourself, by the grace of God you are saved, you are born again and yet you have these um, heavy questions before God, just like um, Habakkuk. But uh, this evening, I want you to encourage a saying, um, three points here. I have this as God's timing is perfect. 
when god allows us to see evil uh, within us and uh, sometimes in, in others when i mean evil it's not um, uh, hitting somebody or something when you see something that is not um, aligned with uh, the word of god or god's righteous standards it could be a small thing it could be a big thing when you see sin within yourself when god opens up through the holy spirit and you are convicted of sin but you don't have the power sometimes to overcome sin or when you see others with um, this wrong standard of righteousness and also when you see this evil in the world outside how do we respond and why is god not giving um, victory dear ones god's timing is always is perfect as for god his his ways are, are perfect and um, all let's turn to psalm 18 verse 30 says as for god his way is perfect the word of the lord is tried he is a buckler to those that trust in him and also psalm 31 verse 15 this my times are in thy hand deliver me from thy in the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me god has everything in his hands god holds our future sometimes we see um people praying and um, kids also praying saying lord you hold you hold the you, our future very good but truly to me, to to apply it into our lives and to trust god saying that god is in control god holds the future god knows our days psalm 37 verse 18 says the lord knoweth the days of the righteous of the upright and their inheritance is for ever when we look at all of these and many other verses that god is very much interested in you god loves you if being a child of god god loves you so much that you cannot understand and paul says that you may try to comprehend the depth the dimensions of god's love but still you are still waiting on god patiently this reminds me of uh, psalm 40 king david verse one says i waited patiently for the lord and he inclined unto me and heard my voice sometimes god ex- expects us to be very patient sometimes god expects us to seek him seek his face and um, wait for him and you still don't receive an answer from god in the way that you wanted and you you are seeing this time is running out and um, you might question god saying that how long how long lord i don't see um, i for me it doesn't make um, any pro, uh, any un, uh, proper sense and i still need to wait but how long so god humbles us as part of this waiting that we wait on knowing that um, not only so but we uh, glory in um, tribulation paul says in romans chapter 5 verse 3 says that we glory in tribulation tribulation work work at patience and patience experience and experience hope so all these things god is as god is working in a child of god there is um, this humility when we are brought down even when we are low and in low profile and when we are brought down by the heavy hand of god and we are going through this fiery furnace of refining and uh, as job said when i'm tried i shall come forth as as gold as we reminded uh, in the worship time that we will be refined as silver as god is working in you the invisible god who is um wonderful and greatly to be praised his creation is marvelous he is great and uh, as he is working in you there is this hard heavy hand of god that will put you down to make you humble we humble under the mighty hand of god so that god can exalt you in his time in due time and we when we see evil before us and wickedness before us as if that god is not doing anything 
we desire more and more of his great salvation. When you see sin and evil and this corruption that is in our body, uh, to a greater extent by the Spirit of God, we see more and more uh, wretchedness. As Paul says that I am the chiefest of all sinners. When we see within us corruption of the flesh, then we value more and more of his great salvation. That we are thankful to God for his great salvation. When we examine ourselves during our valley times, when we go through the valley experience, we wait patiently as Habakkuk, when he was faced with a greater burden that God is going to use the Chaldeans to uh, pass judgment upon God's people rather than um, uh, something else that he was expecting from God, probably a, a revival, but rather than a revival, God had chosen to take them captive to a foreign land. Uh, many will be, be, will be taken captive as a sand, as it says that he was totally devastated, he was distressed. Now he has a much greater burden after God revealed it to him, what he is going to do to his people. Sometimes when God waits, we slow down and focus on what is important to God or else we will be going ahead of, of God, what God wants us to do and we run before even God, probably that's not God's will, but we wanted to do something else that is not important before God. God expects us to be waiting upon Him because His timings are always perfect. God's timing is perfect. Let's... Um, I'm going to give a small illustration. I tried to see if this is really true, but it looks like it's, it's a true story. In, um, in 1948, a man uh, named Masaru uh, in Japan, uh, he was a farmer. Uh, he had a small piece of land with, uh, his, with his elderly father, Asamu. So, what they used to do is they used to produce from a small land um, every year they used to produce um, some vegetables and they used to load up everything in an old cart, ox drawn cart, load up all the vegetables and they used to go to a nearest city to sell their produce every year probably a couple of times. The father and son used to take this load of vegetables and to the nearest city that probably um, is an overnight journey, they, they, more than um, 8 hours I would say uh, in the cart. It's an old cart that they used to go and they used to sell there in the nearest city. The father and the son both had different uh, personalities and uh, they had uh, some differences. The son um, is very um, energetic and uh, he wants to th do things like very quick and then he wa uh, and he wants to get uh, go get a kind of thing he wants to earn money and um, go early and the father is a person who is uh, who is trust god and uh, he he takes things easy as it comes to him he takes it easy and he does uh, he wants to do good so that one day they decided to go again to the nearest city. Uh, so they load the cart and they started the long journey. And the son wanted to walk, go fast. And uh, he starts um, knowing that uh, he, he, the son wants to go next day very early in the morning so he can get a lot of profit. So the son starts um, uh, hitting the, the ox and prodding the ox um, and wants to go fast. And the father says, why do you want to hit the ox? And um, the son says that uh, the sooner we go, we'll get better prizes and uh, we can be early. And he was constantly hitting the ox. After some time, the father says, take it easy, nothing is going to change and the produce will not uh, go waste. They're, they're fine, they'll be good. But in the middle of the journey, after four hours, they, they meet um, the father's brother um, stays there. So they go there and and father says, let's say hello to my brother. And the son will not agree to that. No, I am not going to allow this. But uh, by insist 
insisting, the father insists we have to say hello to my brother and they go and say hello to his, his brother, um, Asamu's brother. It's difficult to remember the names. So uh, Samu and Masaru. Probably you'll, after the message, you'll forget the title of the message also, I guess. <laughs> it's hard to remember uh, the names of <laughs> um, these people. So he'll go to the brother's house and he wants to say hello. He meets and spends an hour and the, the, the son is really upset. Masaru is very upset. And um, you spend, you wasted like one hour time. Now we're going to lose much money and then take it easy, my son. Everything will be fine. The, uh, the produce will be fine, he says. And the father starts going and they spend an hour and, and they take. And after that, uh, then the father's turn now. The father says, and the son, okay, you know, the father will start um, riding uh, the ox and, and the father, while the son is watching, in, uh, he will take a right route. The son will say, father, you have to go left and you are taking right. And um, the, the father will say, take it easy. Uh, the right side is a very scenic route. I want to see the sunset and all the beautiful flowers and everything and meadows. It's a beautiful, let's go in a scenic route, relax and go. Nothing is going to change. The, everything will be fine. We'll go and sell. And the son is now more upset than before. And, and they continue to go and uh, they watch the sunset, beauty and everything. Uh, they, uh, and that night they take rest there. In the morning they, they wake up. And, and uh, as they continue to go, they see somebody's the cart stuck. In, the wheels got, get stuck in, um, uh, in a ditch. And the father will say, let's go and help. And the son will be again upset. Why do you want to help? Because we are running late. And the father will say, no, no, we have to help. They wait and they help. And instead of going, so they help them. And um, that it takes instead of very early in the morning, they are coming closer to the city and they have to go the uphill. And that afternoon, they finally reach the, the hill. From the hill, they have to go down to the city as a reach the hill, the uphill, to see the city. They see the city and uh, to their surprise, they, were, they continue to avoid. They stand there in uh, a surprise uh, for some for great amount of time. They just see the city. And after that, uh, the son will say, I see what you mean, dad. I know what you mean to take it easy and do it um, not in a hurry, but in, in or God allows things to happen, nothing is going to change because that was the day of August 6, 1945 where um, Hiroshima was destroyed and that city is Hiroshima. And they, after looking at all the destruction from the hill, they turn back and go back. The sun realizes that um, there's uh, some things that is not in our hands. God is in control. Sometimes the delay may be for, for our good. Not always that everything is in our control. Even sometimes we don't understand certain things in, in our life. When we don't see God answering, when we wanted to do everything eh, with our own effort and everything happening in the way that we wanted to have, how Habakkuk, when he wanted something else to happen, but God answers in a different way, response in a different way that like he now putting out a much bigger um, burden before the Lord saying that how is that that you are using more wicked people to to take um, um, to deal with uh, the wicked people that are around him. He had another big question and big um, problem before him. So even in our lives also sometimes when we see things rather than slowing down we try to hurry up, do things with our own uh, effort, not looking at Jesus, not looking at God, but God expects us to slow down and he does sometimes very forcefully by uh, doing it in his way, not in our way, so that we will focus on what is important before God, because God's way, God's timing is perfect. We count ourselves but sometimes uh, when we see um, also in the life of others that God is not um, doing things, what we want God to do, God takes time. 
because just like a finished a, a product in order to be finished a finished product takes time don't you agree if you have to do something it takes time even if you get some package or like if you order something from amazon and then you are so excited that the picture is really good but when when you the package comes home it is completely like a um, like a flat box just like the shelf that we got uh, to the church right we ordered a shelf i was thinking it they'll deliver the whole shelf like that but it was just a flat box what did we do all the brothers together uh, with one with oneness and harmony they all did it right it took time so and it looks good probably the sunday school teachers should say but it's good or bad it's done and the to finish it it takes time god also in the fullness of time god does things perfectly is yes, the same way god is patient not willing that anybody any way, any should perish god's timings are not our times a thousand years is like a day to god but god does it god does things perfectly in his time he does for us we hope when god delays when we see wickedness and evil around us we count ourselves to be so blessed that god has saved us within uh if we were not under the grace of god we would have been just like them and many times god gives us this opportunity how blessed i am when we see um people who are not saved behaving uh, so different and god gives us time in in our workplaces in the places that we meet we see why are these people so uh, so different and why is there no peace in their life when they don't follow god's ways when they don't come to the church when they don't have this um, this things that god instructs god's people to come not forsaking the assembly of of uh, god's children and to worship him and to praise him and and to grow in him when people don't do that they just fade away in so many ways there's no peace they fight among themselves and and finally uh, their lives are a big mess we when we see all of this we count ourselves to be so blessed people by the grace of god it gives us opportunity to thank god when we see wickedness of sin and the consequences of it an awareness of uh, holiness of god is manifested in us we hate this sin and the wickedness that's around us we want to just get out of this place and and get out of all the ungodliness that we are in and our soul just like a lot it will grieve our soul when we continue to be in the state god gives this opportunity for us to feel it to experience it and we hope for a city where righteousness dwells we hope for a kingdom where righteousness dwells we look for a, um, a, a kingdom we look for new heavens and new earth as peter says where righteousness dwells even if you don't have this hatred towards the state of wickedness and evil then god spirit is is not truly working in you probably you're backsliding or something is wrong with you as we see more wickedness and sin in the world outside we seek more earnestly for um, holiness and also we seek more earnestly for the souls that are perishing as habakkuk said lord revive their work in the midst of the years in the midst of years lord in wrath remember mercy we feel uh, deep from deep inside we pray for them we pray that they also may be saved so god's timing is perfect dear ones also god's ways are also perfect though it's not always easy path because habakkuk saw a very unexpected response from god in dealing with um, the wickedness of of his people in his land but the bible tells us that my ways are not like your ways your thoughts my thoughts are not like your thoughts as the heavens are above so high are my ways and so are my thoughts um then your thoughts isaiah chapter 55 i think it's verse 9 says talks about that so when god deals with certain situations even in our life in a very unexpected way not all things will um fall in place just the way how you expect 
or I expect. But God, when we trust God, all things will work for our good, as the Bible tells us. When God works in very mysterious ways, first thing that we have to do, as uh, Martin Lloyd Jones uh, mentioned uh, a few, about um, a few things that we should be doing, Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones, a great man of God, he, he preached uh, many sermons. So he said, uh, when things come on our way, which is totally unexpected in our lives, we know that God's ways are righteous, God's ways are perfect, God's ways are not like our ways, God's thoughts are not like our ways, but His, um, he, his ways are for our good. All things work together for God, our good. How do we respond when God um, responds in a way that is totally unexpected for us? How Habakkuk is, uh, was thinking probably this, the cure that uh, I was asking for is worse than, than the disease. Lord, what should I do now? So, uh, Martin Lord Jones mentions is to stop and think, something like that he was saying. To first just stop and think. And don't withdraw, uh, like, uh, don't withdraw our, uh, yourself from God. Sometimes when things happen, but we don't expect in a wrong way, that first thing we'll do is we withdraw, withdraw ourselves from God. We withdraw ourselves from um, uh, what is God doing, from God's work. Next thing is we will withdraw ourselves from God's people also. I'm busy or I don't want to participate in it because there is some kind of a bitterness that gets into your heart. So, but he, what he proposes, and I agree, in, in, I'm paraphrasing it, is, is that we stop and think the principles, the basic principles of God, how God works. When you study the word of God, it is very consistent how God has dwelt with his people in the past. Very, very consistent. Why should God make a difference in your life if you are a child of God? If God knows that there is something that has to be done for um, knowing that um, knowing that he, there is a dwelling place in heaven for you and me, where God is, and when we and when we are with God, when we have this hope of glory. Let's turn to Psalm forty one. Forty one, verse twelve. As for me, thou upholdest me in mine in integrity and setteth me before thy face forever. When we have this hope, dear ones, when God is saying that he is going to work in us, he is going to transform us, he has a plan for you, he makes you precious, he regards you as precious. He has given the blood of Jesus Christ for you, he purchased you with his precious blood. And when God's hand is there upon your life to chisel you. And when God is saying that I'm going to give this promise to you, that I'm going to set you before my face forever as a personal God, and you will be my son and I'll be your God. When he shall receive us to glory, he shall guide me with thy counsel and afterwards receive me to glory. To be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. All these beautiful verses, surely goodness and mercy, shall follow all the days of our life and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And he shall show my salvation. As God says that he is going to show his salvation to God's people. And um, where God is that we will be there. As God promises all these beautiful promises which are sure. And as God is saying that I am with you, I am working with you, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. He will be our God forever and ever, even unto death. Okay, when all of these are true, when God's spirit is working in you and God knows exactly what he is doing and his ways are righteous, why should we withdraw ourselves from God when God is not doing like the way that we want it to happen? When you are, when we're, probably we are going faster than what uh, God wants us to do. Probably our focus is not what God wants our focus to be. Probably we are not humble enough. So, 
we should stop and think and restate the basic principles of God and His ways from God's word and reapply the basic foundations for a particular problem. Then you will know that um, His all things work together for good. And as far as as far as God, as Habakkuk says, I will rejoice in the Lord no matter what. I will joy in my salvation. I will commit the matter, this matter, this problem, this thing to God in faith. I let go. Are we ready to say, um, I will give everything to God. Let him take the driver's seat in our life. As Habakkuk, seeks God, he embraces God. We should also trust in the faithfulness of God. God's faithfulness is great. As Habakkuk lived by faith, as God says, the just shall live by faith, we live by faith. As Habakkuk prayed for revival in the midst of a storm, we can say, as Habakkuk reminded God to show mercy in wrath, when we look at the evil that's around us. Life is not just about us, but it is the vision, the, the true vision of, um, of revival or God may work in, in the lives of our people and in the lives of his people, that we realize it when things happen not according to our plan. Are, are we ready? to commit our lives and commit our ways to God's ways and to trust in God's faithfulness as God's faithfulness is great. Great is thy faithfulness. As the Bible tells us in Psalm 36, it leads a few verses to encourage ourselves. Psalm 36 verse 5 says, Thy mercy, O Lord, is in heavens, and thy faithfulness reaches, reacheth unto the clouds. God's faithfulness. The Lord is faithful. He is a faithful witness. Revelation 1 5 or somewhere it says, He is a faithful witness. We know that 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 that he's, the Lord is faithful. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just. He is a faithful God. The Bible tells us that I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is faithful even in our temptations. He is faithful. He will not allow us to have us go through more than we can bear. So when God has put before us the hope of glory, as David and Habakkuk says that I will joy in the God of my salvation. When we trust in the faithfulness of God, like David, King David in Psalm 21, it says, uh, verse 1 says, The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, in their salvation. How greatly shall he rejoice. This is our memory verse. As the king, we are kings. In um, We are children. We are called as royal priesthood. Royal kingly priests. We are, we are intercessors. And also we are kings. We will reign with Christ, with Jesus Christ. As kings, we joy in the strength of God. And in God's salvation, we greatly rejoice. God is going to set a crown of pure gold on, on us. And when we ask life of, of God, He gave it life unto us, even length of days forever and ever. God, our times are not just this 70, 80 years that we live, but our times, the length of days are forever and ever in the presence of God when God is going to set us before his face forever and ever. This God shall be our God forever and ever. He will guide us continually. When we ask life of thee, thou gavest it to him. David is saying, we also can say that our glory is great in God's salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. God is a God who is going to be long life will I satisfy. I will also honor thee. As Psalm 91 says that I will honor thee and I will deliver thee. Right? God will deliver thee and honor thee. God is going to crown us with honor and majesty. Though we don't deserve the least of 
what he is bestowing upon us for thou hast made him most blessed forever and thou hast made him exceeding glad with God's counting with God's presence God is saying that I am going to make you exceeding glad so when we go through these difficult times not only so Paul says that we glory in tribulation because we are going to come forth as gold and we will be tried when we continue as a believer live by faith as Habakkuk continued to say that though the fig tree shall not blossom and the fruit shall not bear fruit, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, the God of my salvation. I will joy in his salvation. As believers, we as a believer should, should commit our lives to God in faith, embracing him in all of our life's challenges, problems, struggles, in all of our heavy, tough questions that we have before God, we wrestle with Him, we ask Him, we seek Him, but yet continue to trust in Him. We continue to pray, waiting on the Lord of hosts, because He is the Lord of hosts. Looking and seeking God and His work of revival in our lives, and continue to rejoice in the Lord and take joy in the God of our salvation. Let us pray. <clears throat> the loving Holy Father, we thank you for uh, looking at this um, portion of the scriptures from uh, uh, Habakkuk, Lord, how Habakkuk embraced as he wrestled, embraced your truth, embraced your work, and embraced you, Lord, in spite of all the tough questions that he had. Lord, he believed in you and the just shall live by faith. Help us also, Lord, to continue to look towards you and hold on to your promises and to continue to believe in you and continue to have, to embrace you and to continue to joy in the God of our salvation and to rejoice in you, Lord. Lord, bless this word that it may be profitable for all of us. We pray especially for those who are sick among us and those that are still recovering, Lord. We pray that you touch them and heal them, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.